Turning to in general means proximity, getting close. The natural turning to is that we turn to what we like. The question is, how do I experience this I like? When I do things I like, I, I'm attracted, I turn to, I, I step into, I get closer. I want to get closer to whatever I like and to uh, pass time with what I like, be it a hobby, be it a relationship, be it a book, be it a, a, a hiking, whatever I like. I want to like time, to, to, to pass time with that. Doing things I like gives me an inner force, an inner movement, and it, it brings up, on the one hand, delight, Pleasure, lust, also drives, pulsion, pulsion. On the other hand, value as the attractive spiritual part. This is the psychic part and the spiritual part. And we have to ask ourselves, which role is playing the delight and pleasure, this I like, in my life? Do I really take it for serious? Or do I, do I say to myself, that's not so important what you like, you have to do what you have, what's your, your duty, or what's, what your brain is saying, what, your, uh, what others are saying. It is important to have, to come to a full existence that the I like has at least a quarter of that space like the I can, so we need the I like to, be, to come to a full motivation. But it's not the only one. Certainly, it's one of four. Of four. The important things in my life, we, we have to question ourselves, we can question ourselves, did I like them? Did I like to get married? Did I like to, to, to start this job? Do I often do things which I like? The point of reference of the I like is that I do well. The point of reference of, a, of I like is my own life. My life is coming through whenever I say I like. In practice, it is important, if we neglect or ignore the dimension of, del of, del of delight, of the I like, the germ of addiction is laid. Addiction is a form to bring in life which we do not live in the turned to way. Then we hold it from backwards. Prerequisites. What do we need for being able to turn to something or to somebody or to turn to a loss which is mourning? It needs relationship, time and closeness. Relationship, the central of relationship, or that would be a whole week we could talk about relationship. The central is of getting The, the, the center is uh, getting relationship, or feeling related, means having persons who are turned to me. This is a basis for inclination to turn to others. Many questions for ourselves arrive here. Do I have relationship? What kind of relationship? A rule, the rule is, the more I have relationships, the better I can relate to others. Of course, there are two sorts of, two forms of relationship, inner relationship, the turn to oneself, the get in touch with oneself, with the body first. 
to being at home at oneself. With my own desires, drives, with my own lust, do I have a relationship to it? This is the vital spring for, of power. This leads to the question, do I like my life? Do I like my body? Do I like myself? And there is the outer relationship. The big theme, the relationship to others. <coughs> What would I def how would I define a good relationship? How should it be? Big questions. There's a rule. Life flows in relationships or doesn't. Without relationship, there's no life. To experience life needs a relationship. and time, the next prerequisite. Turning to someone means mainly having time for him or her. A good relationship is living from the time we, spare, we, we spend for each other. When time is, is spare in a relationship, the relationship is in danger. Taking time means taking a part of my life for you, for the, child, for the child I'm helping in his homework, for the partner, etc. I take a part of my time, of my lifetime, which is limited, and give this hour to you. I give life to you when I give time. Taking time for something or somebody displays the importance of something. Time means that what, I, what I'm taking time, that should be the important. It's not worth living for the unimportant, for the unnecessary. Closeness, proximity. Getting close is strongly moving one's vitality and force. It evokes emotion. The closer I come to you, you can do it physically. If you get a little bit closer to your, to your neighbor, you get feelings and also the neighbor. It's like, the, like, when, like if two mag magnets come together. It's an induction of life. Closeness induces life and vitality. It evokes emotions. Here starts the existential analytical theory of emotions. We have a known theory developed in the last years. Any emotion is a perception, and that's the definition of emotion. What is an emotion? Is it as an important thing or not? Of course it is important, because we understand emotion that way, and therefore we we take it for import, important. Emotion is a perception of vicinity, of proximity, of closeness, and gives me notice about that what is uh, important for my life. Any emotion is an information of what, or about the importance of something for my life. That's the definition. Emotion is the information, the lived information of the importance something has for my life. So, emotion is a necessary prerequisite for, for a full living. There's a rule. Without emotion, no perception of life. This is a danger in our time when people want to be cool and want 
to deal with the computer science and, and just with the practical part of life. If we omit or neglect emotion, life is gonna lose. The deepest form of relation is the relation to the to life itself. And in this relation to life, we get a feeling of the quality of life. Every one of us has, knowing it or not, has a feeling if this, my own life, has a value or not. If has a feeling, a deep feeling, mostly unconscious or partly unconscious, how worthful, how worthy it is being alive for me. Do I, what feeling do I have? Is it really good that I am living? In my own opinion, not for others. That may be good for others. But for myself, in, 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 in face of myself, me and my life, do I really have the feeling it is good that I am living? Or do I feel uncertain? We have an experience about the quality of life. Not in general, that also, but also about the quality of my own being living, being and living. There are forms of experience in lift, closeness and proximity, like gratitude, love, joy, etc. And there are, of course, special activities. The special activity, of course, it is self-explanatory now, is feeling and experiencing, live, living through. There are, of, this leads to, to the theory of emotion and the theory of value, which is also a big topic in existential analysis. Theory of value in modern existential analysis is based on emotions. Emotions and value are corresponding features. Emotion is the subjective part of the objective, of the perception of an objective value. Objective not in the sense that it can be defined objectively, but objective in the sense of encountering the subject. I experience it makes it turns it to a valuable or not valuable thing. But it is, maybe it is too complicated for that short time. But just hold in mind, emotion and value, they belong together. And through emotions, we normally perceive most the, 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 the existential relevant, existentially relevant values. We perceive the existentially relevant values through emotions. And of course, in the, task, in, in the talk about values, you have to talk about tradition, culture, celebration, community, self-transcendence, joy, responsibility, sorrow, love, femininity, growth and maturity. Let me come to the third existential motivation. The fundamental condition of being a person
Maybe I'm lost now. <laughs> yeah, bet, yeah, I did. Being a person, the ability of being oneself. The source of authenticity And to endure it, <laughs> I really don't like it. <laughs> well, now I, I hope it is. Yeah, it looks like. <laughs> Once more. These are no favorable circumstances. <laughs> well, being a person, the ability of being oneself, the source of authenticity and morality lies on this layer. Ethics is combined with this. The intimacy of existence is in question. The intimacy of existence. What makes it possible to be myself? That's a big question again. To make my existence my own what gives me the right to be myself? What gives me any u my uniqueness, my being special, my identity? The basic question The basic question, I am myself, that's a fact. 
I am I. I am nothing, I am not you. I am not the world. But am I allowed to be that? Where does this question arise? In my appearance, may I look like I do? Am I loved that way? Behavior, may I behave that way I do? For what am I loved? For what I am or for what I do or for what I look like? There is a big danger for the pretty young woman. Shame is a question where it comes up. Shyness, self-assurance. Why does this question arise? Everyone is confronted with the fact of being oneself, separated from others, even from the mother, having a known identity having the choice and chance to decide and being responsible for what one does. And you have to hold out, stand firm against others. What are the consequences if I cannot be myself, if, don't, if I don't be myself, if I'm losing myself, if I am alienated, I don't have my proprium, my own. I don't know my boundaries, can't define them, can, cannot define them. The feeling arises, I may not be the way I am. I'm wrong. I'm not allowed to be or behave that way. People sometimes have for years for a lifetime, such a feeling, deep inside. In the deepest I'm wrong, I may not be that way. The reactions to these feelings, if they pertain, are hysteric reactions. No anxiety, no depression, hysteria, histrionic reactions. There's a big question coming along with this, uh, to, to avoid the negative consequences, to define one's own boundaries. How well can I define my boundaries? Do I know what I want? And do I say it? Do I say no when I mean no? How well do I respect myself? Do I respect myself as well as I respect others? Do I have the feeling that I am allowed to respect myself? What gives me the legitimization? Is it justified? The defense mechanisms are going into a distance. If I cannot be myself, I'm not flight, I, I'm not avoiding, I'm not regressing, I just go apart or go outside. Not anywhere, just to have a distance between you and me if you don't allow me to be myself, if I have the feeling that you don't allow me to be myself. That must, can be my own problem, not his behavior. Taking a distance, I'm saying, not this way, not with me. I can live without you. Or changing suddenly the theme is taking a distance. The paradoxical reaction is the functioning, or the func first, the one is functioning. It means activity without experiencing, without living, just doing the activity, like a machine. I'm doing it, but I'm not there, personally not there. 
I'm functioning. Or punishing, punishing others. For instance, I'm punishing you with not talking with you for the next day. This is also an activity, an act activism. There are many others, like identification with the aggressor, admitting that he's right, laughing with the others about me, exculpate, ex exculpate uh, some myself, wiseacre, attract attention, etc. The aggression is also a specific type of aggression, of restructuring boundaries. That is the aim of being seen, that the other stops hurting, insulting, offending, violating me. Indignation is the basic. Indignation is an activity against indignity. And anger. Defiance. Obstinacy. Defiant refusal. Annoyance. Domineeringness. Reproach. Accusation and self-justification. All these tends to hurt the other by passing over, intruding, dropping, to punish him or to revenge, avenge or revenge. And the most basic is the paralyzation, embitterment, dissociation and splitting. Dissociation between um, psyche and soma, psychosomatic process, and splitting is a dissociation between understanding and feeling of cognition and emotion. Fixations lead to hysteria. Confronting the loss means forgiving and regretting. The personal action through, activity, activi act, acting through, is forgiving. What is forgiving? Of course, there are again phases like in mourning. Forgiving is discharge someone from his debt. To stop any claiming from the other. When I have forgiven, I don't need anything from you to have peace and justice. Forgiving is not, not, not yet reconciling. Reconciling is more. And regretting is working through a guilt, a debt, like mourning. The mourning goes for the loss of value. Regretting goes for the loss of right, for justice. Therefore, it deals with guilt. Regretting is a feeling and a decision and a dialogue. And also it goes over phases. We are doing these phases in our training seminars. We are showing them. It's an act. Regretting is an act of finding myself. It leads to, it enables encounter, which means comfort, consolation. If I'm lonely, yeah, we have to, to, dis, to make the distinction between loneliness and being alone. Loneliness means there is nobody with me, not even me. Being alone means there is somebody, myself. With me. The prerequisites again are attention, justice, and appreciation. Attention means respect of boundaries and necessary distance 
that I can be myself. We imply attention when we have greeting ceremonies, for instance. At receiving attention means I'm seen from another and it helps me to see myself. Justice means acknowledgement of being one's own. Acknowledgement of that which belongs to me. This is the core, the, the, or the, the central theme of justice. It's correctness. It's the appropriate behavior. If, I'm just, if I do justice to myself, I take myself seriously. I take for serious, which means I take for serious my own feelings, that what is coming up within me. I take for serious the mind, what is mine. Appreciation is still deeper. It means taking a position to myself, judging myself critically and which leads to a respect for the real own, for the irreplaceable and introducing the moral conscience. This give it, is giving me natural authority. From these prerequisites derive the self-image, the ego structure, and the ego strength. The ego strength is when I stand behind, behind myself. And also authenticity, the tuning to oneself, to live according to the genuine feeling In the special activity, these are the results, self-image, ego structure, ego strength and authenticity. The special activity is to sense, which is a, a form of feeling. It's regarding oneself and others in the depths, sensing. It's not perceiving, it's not feeling. It's feeling the, essent, the, the essential, the right, the correct, that what is going on over a distance. I need no contact, no physical contact, no closeness. This is sensing, sensing what is going on in myself, in others, what is the essential. It's a kind of intu it's intuition also. This allows a full personal understanding. And the other activity is encounter, which means, which goes over to a theory of person. I don't know, now it's 12 o'clock, we have still the fourth existential motivation. I can do it in 10 minutes if you want to do it, or we can interrupt and stop here as you prefer, either a little later, excuse myself, yeah? <laughs> Encounter, very briefly, is the I-you relationship. Me as a person, in my essential, what taking seriously, what is going on within myself, I present you that, and if you do the same, then we meet on an I-U uh, level. That's just very briefly to say that. Well, the fourth existential motivation is the fundamental condition for a meaningful life, the ability of finding meaning. The basic question, I'm there, 
for what good. When I see, have no meaning, when I don't see what is making sense, then it stops my activity. Therefore, it is also a fundamental motivation. There is a rule. We are not able to do something deliberately if we don't see a meaning in our deed or work. We are not able to do something willingly, deliberately, if we don't see a meaning. We could talk long about this, but if you don't see a meaning to, to remain here the last five or seven minutes, then uh, you can't do it willingly. You may be uh, forced uh, or you have anger or fear or whatever. The most basic form to find meaning is the defined in the existential term. The me being asked by the situation. This was how Frankl was putting it. The question is going along with this, what can you do with this to make it better, to experience a value in it? Negative consequences, we already were talking about, no meaning, no will. Frankl therefore was putting the motivation, his concept of motivation, into the term of will to meaning. He combined the term will the term meaning. But without these three layers underneath, this concept can easily become a cognitive concept, a cognitivistic concept. So we need the feeling and we need the I can and the, the identity. And on these three layers, then it becomes very natural to deal with the concept of, mean, of meaning, it, comes, it becomes a wholeness. Will is an effort, a strain. It's being disposed to invest force, time, to endure hard, hardness, fatigue, to go, to, way, to go the way to pay for something. That means I will. It's not like a wish. Wish is perceive, receiving, waiting. Will is active investment, an active investment. And as reasonable beings as we are, this presupposes a meaning. If we invest without getting something, we are crazy. The defense mechanisms, provisional life, without commitment, ersatz life, activism, ersatz life, lust and greed for power, this was Frankl straining it, fanaticism, idealization, days, Exaggeration and turning all into a play, provocation, these are activisms, paradoxical reactions. The type of aggression is cynicism. I think it is wrong, what I, the way I've written it. Cynicism. Playful, pleasurable aggression. When people like just for fun to, to hurt others, to destroy cars, etc. Just for pleasure. And the deepest apathy, loss of interest, maybe nihilism can be seen as a, a higher form of uh, 
freezing, existential freezing. The confrontation with the loss of meaning means openness to the demand of the situation and to the offering of the situation, to the demand and the offering of the situation. Tuning the situation with oneself, one's own I can, I like, I am allowed, and to the need of the situation, to the I ought, tuning the I can, I, I like, I am allowed, to the I ought, and tuning both with others and the future. Then I am putting myself into a meaningful context. The prerequisites, we need a field of activity, for instance a job, a family, an art, an instrument, a piano where we, which we can play, where we can get productive, devote ourselves, wherein I can shoot like a seed, a field which corresponds to my abilities and talents, so that I can really perform. It's so important for young people to find their appropriate field of activity, to test several activities. That is the meaning of school, to a field where they can test their abilities. A structural context. It is necessary that the meaning transcends the actual situation. It is placed within a wider horizon. We are sitting here, as I was telling at the beginning, not just for sitting here, but for our work, for other people, for understanding my life in the world, even for faith. You have different um, diameters of horizons. Excuse me. And a value in the future, meaning being directed toward a value. It leads to a value. These are the dimension of becoming. The existential meaning is defined as the most valuable possibility of the given situation. The most valuable possibility of the given situation. The ontological meaning is the meaning of being, which goes to philosophy, art, and religion. The special activity, of course, is acting, devoting oneself and commitment. And here I am coming to the end. Commitment means to give oneself into the situation, to embrace the given, to improve it and stamp it with our signature. Thus we have brought something worthful into the world and contributed to the wonder of the world, of the life, of being a person and of becoming and being integrated. I wonder where we could be part of if we wanted. A wonder which we could never grasp but always assist and be a witness of. Thank you and excuse my being late.